Okay, so welcome to uh, Carpenter's Church Teachers Training Academy. Um, very excited about your decision to uh, accept the calling uh, that God has on your life for this uh, one of the fivefold ministry uh, places. Um, God bless you in that. I know it probably took a little bit of um, uh, prompting from the Holy Spirit, maybe over and over again. You know, uh, most of the times when He's calling us to things, we uh, don't always respond uh, quickly, uh, but we do respond in time. So thank God He's patient with us through that. Um, so uh, we are very grateful to you for accepting this, and we're uh, going to go through this material over the next uh, six or seven weeks um, that we have for um, have to uh, put you in the place or to give you some tools as you serve in the place that God has for you to be. Uh, the purpose of this or the theme for this uh, training academy is equipping, equipping the saints to teach sound doctrine. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about uh, about uh, sound doctrine is what is actually what we're what our aim is and what we want to make sure that we're always teaching is uh, the sound doctrine that's in line with uh, with scripture, uh, in line with uh, what God is telling us to do. Um, so we're going to uh, this is. Uh, the agenda for tonight, uh, kind of mostly an introduction and overview into the class or the classes that we'll be going over over the next few weeks. Um, give you a little bit of time to uh, space to, um, I'll give you my personal story and then we'll uh, give you a chance to tell yours as well, your teaching journey, what brought you to this point um, and uh, where you are in your calling. And then I have um, assignment with a question mark because some, some of us know uh, who we're assigned to, uh, some of us don't, and we're still trying to figure that out. Uh, so if, you're, if you are still trying to figure that out, that's fine, uh, because we're all uh, in some area in there, whether we know it uh, or we're still, um, still trying to figure that out, and that's okay. Uh, I don't want you to become um, intimidated by the fact that you may not. Uh, it might be you learn as you go along. Uh, sometimes you know ahead of time exactly who you're called to because uh, we all call to a people uh, as we've been learning in uh, from Pastor Deaver uh, in his teaching and his preaching uh, that the work is a people and we're called to a people. Uh, so there, whatever uh, calling is on your life and whatever God has placed you uh, and gifted you and equipped you for, uh, it's to a people. Uh, so we're going to prayerfully be able to, uh, you'll know that or have some uh, some uh, uh, idea of what that is as you're going along. Uh, going over the syllabus, uh, talk about some of the stuff in the class or what to expect as we go along. Um, then I wanted to look at our uh, the teaching, uh, look at the, the uh, Carpenter's Church Manual, uh, the page, I think I sent everybody the page uh, that talks about the teaching manager or teaching ministry. Uh, and the expectations from there. So we want to make sure that we uh, look at that and um, and are in line with that. Um, and then finally, the talk about the uh, the ministry gift, uh, what that means. I'll be using uh, Apostle Heron's book. Uh, if you haven't gotten it, it's actually a very good read, very short read, um, not that long, but very powerful. Uh, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And he talks about uh, spiritual gift and ministry gift. Um, so we, I want to pull out a, a couple of a uh, couple of things he quoted about that that's going to help us as, as we go forward in the classes as well. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to you know just a little bit about myself. Um, I've been I, I don't I'm not even sure I remember not teaching. I think I've always been even as a as a uh, young person uh, in the church um, in Sunday school uh, that was. Uh, one of the churches I belonged to before I went in the military, I was the actual the assistant uh, superintendent of Sunday school. Um, so I was filling in for teachers and then teaching people who were much, much older than me. Uh, so I've always been involved with that. Um, even in the military, I was a, uh, we had to do a lot of training uh, with my job, but you know, one of my tours of duty was as an instructor, as a teacher. Uh, which I enjoyed immensely, and I love to love to be able to to train people to do what I did, uh, or to teach them what I knew. 
I always felt that it was my responsibility to pass on what I had learned to somebody else. Uh, and when we would get somebody in the class and we came in and had no clue of, of what to, of how to do it, I, was, I taught um, air traffic control, uh, but I taught air traffic control from an aircraft carrier, which is completely different from uh, an airport. Uh, so I taught how to teach, how to control airplanes on an aircraft carrier, and there were people who came into class who were like intimidated by it and scared by it, like, how do you, I don't understand. It's like, it's okay, we're going to get you there. So uh, just give us time, you know, you're not going to know it all at once, but if you follow what we're telling you, we'll get you there. So I always felt like it was it was a source of, you know, I loved that person that came in and had no clue how to do this. And then by the end of the class, by the end of the course, they at least had a basic idea of how to do it. So uh, the teaching has always been there. Uh, I love to teach. I love to uh, help people learn what I've learned um, and to help people to get to where God would have them to be um, through teaching. So uh, that's my story. And that's the calling that's always been on me. Now, um, yours is going to be different. You may find that maybe you've been teaching your whole life. Uh, you may have been teaching. You might have been in that position. And now God is calling you out um, for this important call or for this important place. Um, so uh, I want you to, uh, wanted you to know what your story is and where God uh, has you and where he's taken you because that's going to be something that you're going to want to lean on even as you go deeper into this. You're always going to want to come back to what God is having you do and uh, what you uh, sense him doing. Uh, you'll, you'll be with some students or trying to teach some students, and they'll, they'll ask you about your story. Um, and one of the ways to help them to open up about their story is if you're able to uh, open up about yours as well. So you heard my story. Uh, who wants to go next and tell us their their story that led them to this place in their uh, in this uh, teaching journey that you're on? I mean, I'll go. Uh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I really, I really don't have the history you got. I mean, I've never had a history of teaching um, any of that, um, but I know pastors. Uh, suggested that I take this course. Um, Pastor Tasha has prophesied um, that God told her that um, I'm going to be teaching the word. So, I mean, I'm pretty much just taking this course to get some knowledge um, and get a little more comfortable with the calling. Um, uh, yeah, just okay. trying to get comfortable, trying to get, trying to get some knowledge. Um, you know, I've never, I, I'd never imagined myself doing this. Um, I've always had a fear of speaking in front of people and all of that. But, you know, you can say one thing, but when God has a plan, um, I know it's greater than what I may fear, what I may think, what I may know, or what I may think I'm not qualified for. So this is just my obedience. Um, and I'm expecting God to show up and show out as, as we go through this course. Okay. That's good. Thank you, Josh. And, and about the nervousness, um, and, and people don't believe me when I say this, but I'm always nervous. When I, do hey, I, was, I always am. I was about to say that because uh, the way you be giving that word, brother, no, nah, I wouldn't have think you was the nervous type <laughs> either. It'd be so precise, so clean. you just be so, I'm like, man, I'm on that. But, and I so appreciate that. But if you could see inside me, you would not say that. And and people still <laughs> believe me. They they don't. They think I'm kidding. They, I'm serious. I'm nervous every single time. You know, the the, the nervousness is not going to go away. And, but I love what you said about when uh, when God is in, He's bigger. He's going to do more. So it's your faith in Him, your courage, your confidence that overcomes that. Uh, don't look for the nervousness to go away. In fact, I was told that if your nervousness goes away, that means you're depending on yourself too much. So the nervousness mm -hmm. might be good. <laughs> it keeps okay. you grounded. It keeps you humble. And it keeps you uh, keeps you learning and studying, which, uh, and we'll talk about those things. So don't, uh, you know, don't uh, 
beat yourself up too much uh, about being nervous. I'm nervous. I'm always, I think I'm all, and I, I, you know, I've been nervous every time, believe it or not. So, I now, pray to God because you do a good job of hiding it, brother. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, who's next? I'm sorry, I was on mute. No. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Um, teaching for me has been, I guess, something I've done for a while. Um, I've been, it started with like youth when I became a youth leader years ago. Um, you know, uh, dealing with the young women, um, you know, just kind of guiding. I guess it was kind of a guidance thing. Um, don't fall into the pitfalls I fell into kind of thing. And that's where it started from. And then it just grew from there. Um, you know, for me, um, if I'm, if I believe in it, I'm passionate about it. And if I can help, I definitely will. And that's where, you know, where God, I, I guess I'm kind of in a way doing what um, Josh is doing, availing myself to where God wants me to be now, you know, um, like I said, I've been in teaching, I've done, you know, pretty much every aspect of the church. A um, um, couple of years ago, Stephanie, uh, minister Stephanie and I uh, did a evangelist class and I hadn't taught in a long time. And that was scary. Like you said, I was nervous. And, and, and the back, in fact, I wasn't even, um, well, I'm not ordained yet. I'm just um, been given the first licensed. I'm just licensed, but I wasn't licensed yet when we took the class for, or taught the class for evangelism. And I'm like, how can I teach a class? And I'm not even doing it. And a apostle kept telling me, but if it's, it's in you, it's in you, you know, and just do the steps. And it was an awesome lesson. It, it opened my eyes to some things and God was talking to me about some things. So for me, this class is just um, giving God the opportunity to, to take me where he wants me to go, um, you know and allow him to use me as he will. Okay. Amen. And you did a wonderful job with that. Both of you did uh, <laughs> with that teaching class. I thought you guys did, did well. And uh, so uh, dive in, uh, see where God wants to take you and, and allow him to, to use you. Wonderful. Stephanie? Hello. Um, so yeah, I, um... I guess as I listen to other people speak, I'm like, oh, that's what I was doing. Because <laughs> <laughs> I have been um, a, a youth leader as well over the years. Um, started um, when I was in Long Beach. I was one of the youth leaders at a church um, that I was going to and um, you know, I've been a praise and worship leader um, for many years as well. And, you know, when you're with the connected to the Herons, there's, you know, <laughs> you're going to be teaching something. <laughs> yeah. It just leaks from them and pours onto you. So, um, so I've been doing it well. I mean, doing it for a very long time. And um, so I am just here, one, because I like to learn and gather and um, understand and participate. So I'm excited for what's going to come um, out of this class for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Um, we, uh, it's exciting to, and I'm glad that you took the step to actually want to, to learn. It's one thing to say, I want to learn, but then it's another thing to actually enroll in something and be a part of something and sacrifice the time um, to learn. Uh, so we thank you for that, uh, for, uh, again, uh, even if it's just here to just, to just figure out, because sometimes, and, and I didn't want to um, um, restrict this class to just those uh, who felt a calling, because some people, I'm not sure if they're calling. You, they might be unsure of it. So I'm glad that, that there are a couple of you are saying, I'm, I'm just here to try to learn and see. Well, that's good because that, this is how we learn and see as well. You know, even if, even if you're not exactly sure that this is the calling, 
well, once you learn it, then, then hopefully it'll become clear to you and it'll help uh, in what you do believe God is calling you to. So I want to uh, go through, um, I think I emailed to everybody the, uh, the syllabus. So I wanted to, to go through that and to, uh, as we go through what we're going to be talking about in the coming weeks, um, uh, you see week one, this is what we're doing now. Uh, next week, we're talking about the qualities and character of a teacher. Uh, those are going to be very important. Um, I felt it was necessary to cover those things before we got into actually teaching methods and those types of things which we're going, which we're going to learn. Uh, it's more important to go through the qualities and characteristics, uh, character of a teacher because that's going to become uh, probably your most powerful teaching tool uh, mm -hmm. is your character. Um, you, uh, if you've ever been around people who uh, say one thing and live something else, uh, their life will mess with their teaching and mess with what they're trying to convey to you. So we want to make sure that we are prioritizing uh, the qualities and character, even the purpose and power of a teacher. The power of a teacher is enormous. There is enormous power and responsibility that comes with being a teacher or, um, and standing up in front of people and, 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 and operating in that office or in that place. Um, there's tremendous power that's there, and we're going to look at, uh, look at that as well and make us aware of that power um, with the uh, for those that are, and I you may use some uh, other examples of things. I mean, use my first example, which is from uh, from Spider-Man. Uh, I'm a big Marvel fan, so uh, Spider-Man's or, or Peter Parker's uh, Uncle Ben told him before he died, "With great power comes great responsibility." So this power of a teacher, you've got the responsibility of what to do with it, because if I use it the right way it will have a profound effect on people and helping them in their life. Uh, but if I use it the wrong way, then it will, it will have the opposite effect and will damage and hurt people, uh, which we don't want to do. So we want to be aware of that power, and we want to use it in the most responsible way possible. Uh, so we'll talk about that uh, in, in uh, coming weeks. Then we'll go over some teaching methods, uh, things we can use, uh, examples, I'm one of those, and maybe you're not. You have to see what your teaching method style is. Um, I like examples. Uh, you can give me theories, but you got to give me examples of how that theory worked out. Um, I, uh, I use um, all types of examples from the things that I see on television, uh, lines in movies. Um, my wife will attest to, I'm, I'm, I don't know what it is about movie lines, but they just stick with me, you know. And you know, if I can work them into a message or into it, into uh, a lesson, uh, I will. <laughs> uh, I do it all the time, and so that and that just that just helps me to understand it. I'm I'm a person who can read it and read it, and I love reading. But eventually, there's got to be some sort of example. You got to help. You got to let me let me do it, or give me an example of it. Uh, I learn most from examples, and and sometimes that's how our students will learn too. Uh, and so we have to develop our own teaching uh, teaching method uh, and be aware of them and what we can use. Then we're going to go into some, uh, some how to teaching the Bible. Uh, what are the tools that we can use as we're teaching the Bible? How are we supposed to present the Bible and to teach in a way so we can teach that sound doctrine? I'm um, going to borrow some from uh, uh, Apostle Heron's um, hermeneutics class. Uh, that some of us took, uh, a, I think, a little over a year ago. Uh, Use a lot of his stuff because he has some very good, powerful teaching tools about uh, about Bible teaching and hermeneutics and things like that. Don't let the big terms fool you or scare you, I should say. Uh, it's not that scary once you break it down and make it simple, uh, and we'll do that so, so that we can be effective in doing that. Uh, we're going to talk about learning and motivating. Um, one of the things that I want to begin to uh, just uh, to uh, impress upon you, even from the beginning, uh, is to is to even as a teacher, never stop learning, never stop learning. Um, if you and I'm guilty of this too, you know. Okay, I've, I've learned 
there may not, you know, I may not be learning as much as I should or doing things in order to keep learning, uh, but it's time to get back into learning. If you're going to be a teacher, you got to be at first a good learner. Uh, you have to learn things in order to teach it. You can't teach anybody anything that you haven't learned yourself. Uh, and being able to teach from experience is usually the most powerful and effective teaching method. Um, to teach just theory, um, it, it can have some effect and, and it, may, it may help, it may be effective, but I found, and I think most of us have found that the most effective teaching method uh, is from experience, the things that you've gone through and experienced yourself or have read and seen, uh, but uh, that involves learning. Continuing to learn, lifelong learners is what we wanna be. Um, and then learning how to motivate our students so that they can learn, because everybody doesn't learn the same way. Um, some people like lectures. I can't stand lectures. Um, when I was in college, I could not stand the classes that were lectures uh, because they, uh, they drove me crazy. It was boring, <laughs> you know, and I, I usually went to sleep. So I probably didn't catch whatever the lecturer was trying to teach me anyway. Uh, if I, I need interaction, uh, being able to ask questions, being able to, you know, to uh, discussion, those types of things, those are the types of classes that appeal to me. It may not be that way. Some people may want, um, may want the lecture. Uh, so we find different ways of motivating our students based on uh, what their learning style is. Uh, and then I know someone already sent me a chat message uh, under week seven. It said final exam, and I know someone was freaking out. Oh my God, it was an exam. Now, the, and I think I pointed this out in the email that I sent you. This is not a grade, this is not a graded pass or fail type of class. Uh, this is not a, you know, if I don't pass the final exam, do I have to take this again? There's nothing like that. I'm just, it's a fine, <laughs> I didn't hesitate to put it as final exam, but I couldn't think of anything else to name it. Um, it's just, what, what did we talk about? You know, it's very basic to think of just the main point about what we've talked about. Just like I, I said, we're lifelong learners. So on the final exam, if I said, you should be a blank long learner, hopefully you can remember to put in the other word for it. Because <laughs> we really want to stress that to you, that that's what you want to be. And I just, there's just points that I want to make sure that you get moving forward. It's not, uh, it's not a pass or fail uh, or anything like that. Um, and that's what we will have that exam on the, the week seven, then week eight, we'll come back, talk about it, um, review it, and assignments is to see if anybody's identified whatever assignment you feel that you've been called to. Um, I know that one of the things that I want the, uh, the teaching ministry to do at the Carpenters Church is to expand and have teachers available for when we actually return back to a physical building, uh, then we can have uh, classes like we have the under construction time now, and it's mainly the adults that are there. I'd like to have uh, a youth under construction class going on, uh, but there's, we need teachers for that. So that's what I would like. Um, we'll see who's called to what um, and where uh, where God would have you to fill in uh, in that uh, in that segment. And then the assessment is um, I'm generating an assessment of this course for you to fill out uh, what you like, what you didn't like, what you'd like to see, uh, those types of things uh, moving forward so we can make improvements uh, for future classes. So does that, hopefully those that got scared about tests, does that help you? You're, you're okay? I don't know if you're the... Yeah, it helps me because I ain't going to lie. When I saw a final exam, a little piece of me was like, bro, no. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was like final exam. All right, now you about to go teach. That's what I thought. Yeah. But. Now, now the, what I want to do is again get those points. Uh, see, to make sure that you got you know the basic main points that I'm trying to stress throughout this course, and then we'll see where you know we'll kind of see where God would have us put you. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to jump. I'm not going to throw you in like that. I, I, I'm just not. <laughs> you know, I know that in some places. Uh, uh, <laughs> That some places will do that, you know, some churches will do that, but I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want to say, okay, you've done this, now go teach this. 
No, we're going to, we, I want to see where God would have you because I want to place you where God wants you to be and not have you drowning where he doesn't want you to be. Thank you. Amen. I saw the same thing, Josh. I was like, wait a minute. What is this? Take a test? <laughs> <laughs> There's no testing. No testing. Yeah. And like I said, I, I couldn't think of another term for final exam. I guess I should have made it something else. No, so that's could, good. I don't know, but I couldn't think of anything else. So. For me, that's no, yeah, it's good. Okay. <laughs> but it was scary. But it was good. Okay. Yeah. We got it. All right. <laughs> and there you see the objectives, the things that that um, that is our goals for you to uh, to catch on to or to learn going through this, to be confident in his or her calling. Uh, and thank you, Stephanie, for pointing that out. I saw I had her or her. I think it's on your the copies of if you look at your. Your syllabus that says her or her, please change that to his or her, because that's what I meant. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I saw it, but I got you. <laughs> um, yeah, commit to the lifestyle. Again, we want to, we're want we stressing the character of the lifestyle of the teacher first. I uh, want you to have a deeper understanding of the power. We kind of talked about that. Uh, basics of Bible teaching. More familiar with different, different teaching methods. And then recognize various ways people learn and how to motivate students. So that's the things that we're going to talk about. And this will be an ongoing thing, uh, kind of going into um, into the next, uh, talking about the, the class. Uh, and I, a lot of it is in the, the email. Uh, but it's, I want to make sure that, it's, uh, that we go into or we do uh, ongoing um, teacher meetings, uh, even after the class is over, um, the course is over, the academy is over, I should say. Then we'll meet on a... Uh, probably a monthly basis or so, and and go deeper into learning, go deeper into motivating, go deeper into character traits, those types of things, some sort of subject for us to continue learning, also to uh, express any um, issues that we're having with teaching, uh, share ideas, uh, if you have any ideas or anything or things that you've read and want to share just to, uh, so we can all grow and go deeper. Um, because like I said, once the academy is over, uh, then, then I think the real learning and the real test begins, <laughs> not just my little final exam. I think that there's an ongoing testing uh, that happens. And so I want us to meet periodically and continue to discuss those things. Uh, in the email that I sent will be, like I said, Tuesday evenings from 7. I, I want to keep it like an, about an hour or so. I did say 8.30 in the email just to kind of give us that that cushion just in case we get into a discussion and it goes long. I don't want you looking at me cross-eyed at eight o'clock because we're not quite done. Uh, but I would like to keep it at an, about an hour or so uh, because I want to respect your time. I know you've got other, many other things to do. Uh, you're in the right meeting room. Uh, the classes will be recorded. Uh, so, and I'll give you access to, uh, to the link uh, to reviewing it at any time. Uh, if you can't attend, let me know. Um, and I think the rest of it is self-explanatory. It's not graded. I should have highlighted that in the email. It's not a graded class. Don't worry about A, B, Cs, or none of that stuff. Uh, just wanted to be active in the participation of it, complete the assignment, and let that help you absorb the material uh, so you can use it when you're teaching. Uh, that's what it's mainly for, uh, not just to uh, regurg put it out on a, on, on a test, but so that you use it when you're actually teaching. Any comments or questions so far? No, sir. Can I get a certificate at the end, please? We're all going to get certificates. Oh, yay. Oh, I yay. love Everybody certificates. certificates. Yay. Yes, absolutely. We're going to get certificates. You deserve I, certificates. And <laughs> we yay. will get you certificates. Okay, good. <laughs> I heard you like certificates to put on the wall. So. <laughs> I know. I don't know why <laughs> or where it comes. That's April, okay. But I love certificates. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> get, you a, get you an I love me wall. <laughs> Put all your certificates up. Right. Hey, that's a good motivator, you know, yeah. and a reminder of what you do. Because I'm a person that I just do what I do. You know what I mean? Like I administrate. I just take care of. I just do it. But when I'm like... At when my when I was in the corporate world, I had to put that into a self assessment. I'm just like, I don't know. I just do what I do. But you know what I mean. The reminder is a yeah. good, 
you know, saying, look, you have accomplished and you are equipped and things like that. Yes, Amen. absolutely. I'll shut up. Yes, there will be some good. Honey has a wall of certificates somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> If I turn my camera around, you can see it, but you can't see it. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I want to look at, um, to talk about the syllabus, um, I want to look at the, from the, I, I don't know how good a picture that is, I don't know if you can see that, uh, from the, um, from the TCC manual. Uh, this is the page on the teaching minister, uh, teaching ministry, um, the teacher's uh, requirements and responsibilities, um, the things that are um, required of them. Um, one of the things that I did ask Pastor about uh, was under general qualifications, it has the, the second item says must have an advanced ministerial degree from an accredited college degree university. So I asked him about that because I was like, uh, <laughs> what if the people don't? And he was like, he's going to take that out and change it because he doesn't want that to be a requirement because um, you're a lifelong learner. Now, having said that, it would behoove you, <laughs> if at all possible, uh, to go to school and become formally trained. There is great value, a, a, a wealth of information. And uh, if you can at all uh, fit that into your schedule and, and make that happen for yourself, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. It is, it is a wonderful, wonderful experience. Is that something you can do online as far as you, the classes? Yeah, a lot of them you can do online, uh, especially nowadays. Uh, you can, uh, you can, you, yeah, you absolutely can uh, do that. I believe that uh, that's what um, Pastor's doing online from Liberty University, yeah. or I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, you can. Okay. Um, yeah, because I was, did you have something, uh, Ricky? Okay. So, yeah, because. I was, um, when I got into ministry, that was one of the things that, that my pastor stressed. Um, God made it happen, uh, and it was, it was absolutely phenomenal. I loved it, loved the experience. Um, it, it, it refueled the, the learner in me, because I hadn't been to school in a long time. Uh, so it refueled that, learning, reading. The papers were a challenge, but we got through it. But it was just all the knowledge that you get um, is just, is, I, beyond description, you know, I, I think, but as much as I learned, it taught me how much more I have to learn uh, and gave me the motivation to keep learning. Uh, so uh, highly recommend that. Um, any questions, have, have you guys had a chance to look over this, this page? Mm -hmm. Yes, no, be honest, it, it's just <laughs> us and it's okay if you didn't. <laughs> Yeah, I looked over it, but no questions. Okay. Um, one of the things that I, uh, just a couple of things I'm going to bring out. If there's something else you read that you want to bring out or discuss, feel free to do that. You can always, you know, unmute, ask questions or whatever. We're not that formal, just a, just a few of us. Uh, there is the demand for sound biblical teaching. That's why I want to make sure that we're sound, uh, sound doctrine is what we want to teach. Uh, there's a scripture in uh, James 3 and 1 that talks about that uh, not everyone should be teachers because you're uh, subject to the more stricter condemnation uh, and stricter judgment, uh, it says. And that's because, you know, we're, you, and that goes with that power, that responsibility that you have if you're misusing that and teaching people wrong on, you know, so that's why we want to be sound biblical teachers and that. The scripture about how we stand, you know, or can, uh, we will uh, face the, the stricter judgment, that should keep us humble, uh, that we want to do things as the Spirit leads us, not in our own strength, not because we, uh, not in our own power, our own flesh, but as the Spirit leads, uh, then we will be doing things the right way, uh, and we will be able to avoid that, that stricter judgment, but we don't want to uh, we don't want to misuse the power that we have and what God has blessed us to be able to do. Don't know that the strong, uh, advanced, active, ongoing disciple. 
uh, commitment to team approach ministry, which includes delegating responsibility to team members, strong teacher with the love of God's word, relational style of ministry, of leadership and ministry. Always, then that's probably the, the, the best um, leadership style because it involves other people. Uh, we're not being teachers to be in a bubble. You're being teachers in order to, to teach students. You know, without the students, then, you know, I don't know what you're teaching or how valuable it is. Um, the, the lessons that we've been learning from, from uh, Pastor Therese's uh, teaching and preaching this month is that it, it involves, is we're called to a people. Our assignments are people. Ministry is people. Um, what is a teacher without, that doesn't have students? You know, what is a pastor that, with no congregation? What is the, you know, an apostle or a prophet or without you know, someone to, uh, to, to speak to and to lead and guide. Uh, all the part of those offices and those callings, they involve people. Uh, so the relational style of ministry and leadership, it involves people and dealing with people and being able to, to, uh, to work with people in order to advance the kingdom. And that, that's what we want to do is learn how to do it. I can do it on my own by myself, and that's great, but that's not the goal. The goal is to do it with you. Uh, the goal is, you know, that you're doing with me. I hear the song, I need you, you need me, we're all a part of it. Yeah, y'all know the song. Don't get me to sing it. I'll start singing up in here. But the, my wife's saying, hey, don't you do that. But we're, we're all a part it's of crazy. each other. <laughs> we're all a part of each other. And so that's the beauty of ministry is that we're, it involves people and we're working together, all, uh, all of us working together towards the same goal. Uh, do, 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 teach doctrine consistent with the Bible. We talked about commit to excellence in all aspects of the ministry, and that's why we're going uh, starting with our uh, the character and um, the life because that's got excellence has got to go over into that as well. Uh, train volunteer teachers and potential leaders. So uh, after your training, uh, you might be assigned to train somebody else, uh, and you never know the leaders that you'll be training. You know, and who they'll train. So it just keeps on going from there. I think that was the syllabus. Questions or comments about that? So just to clarify, we're this class starts this week, and we're going all the way into the mid of March, March sixteenth. If we do the straight eight weeks. Yes. Okay. Cool. Okay. So the the final item um, that I wanted to for us to look at and consider was um, again what it means the ministry gifts. Uh, there is, and this comes from and again this is from Apostle Heron's book. Here it is. I don't know if that's backwards if you can see that. Um, Dr. Michael C. Heron, <laughs> that's our apostle. <laughs> Great book, uh, very thin, not that, you know, not that uh, big of a read, but very powerful in the things that it talks about. And those of us who have been around him, you know that this is his theme scripture, uh, Ephesians 4, 11, and 12, uh, when it talks about, or that whole section, when it talks about unity. Um, and his point that he makes in here that I wanted uh, to, us to end the evening with uh, from verse 11 of Ephesians 4:11 says he gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. And a couple of points that he makes in the book, uh, these are out of the book. It is very important to understand that these are offices and not gifts. The person holding the office is the gift, not the recipient. You are the gift as a teacher. You are the gift. So people talk about the gift of teaching. Uh, in this, um, in the context of this scripture, the teacher is the gift. Uh, the pastor is the gift. The evangelist is the gift. Um, a teacher is not gifted to serve in this office, but called to serve in this office because the gifting is already in you. Um, it's already there. This training class is not to give you. It's just to start to help to bring that out, but it's already in you. Uh, as a teacher, you're already gifted uh, in that sense. Now you're responding to the call where God can now use you or use what's in you so that you can be that gift to the church. 
Does that make sense? So the point is, you're the gift. You're the gift. <laughs> you are the gift. Um, in verse 12, it says that the purpose of the, uh, the purpose of the gift is to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So if the person is not the recipient, then who then is the recipient? It's the church. The church is the recipient of what God has in you. And when you answer the calling and, and, uh, and humbly serve where he is calling you to serve, then you're, you're uh, allowing the church to be a recipient of the gift that's in you, or the gift of you, I should say. Uh, a teacher may be physically placed in a local congregation, uh, but he or she has a responsibility to the whole body. So your calling, um, although initially may be to uh, the carpenter's church, know that you have a greater calling uh, beyond the carpenter's church to people outside the carpenter's church. Um, I think it's, I, I love that about uh, Pastor Deaver, and I did the same thing when I was actively pastoring. It, you know, I didn't tell somebody, well, unless you go to my church, I can't help you. You know, unless you, or unless you attend my church, you know, sorry, we can't talk or nothing. You know, sign your name on the on the church roll, and then we can, <laughs> and then we can help. No, we, our our assignment is to the body of Christ. Uh, it might be um, more uh, more focused in that local assembly, but it's never at the expense of the the, the body of Christ as a whole. Uh, that's where our ultimate responsibility is, and that's who we're called to. So don't be surprised if you're if you decide that you know teacher is my calling, and you find out that your assignment is outside the carpenter's church, because it very well could be, and that's okay. Okay, that's okay. You want to be where God wants you to be, and your calling, overall calling, is to the whole body. So, um, and this is actually a quote from his book as well. Uh, I, the teacher, am neither the giver nor the recipient. I am the gift itself and therefore belong to the church. So that's the name of the book, Have You Received the Holy Ghost Since You Believed? And um, the author is our own Dr. Michael C. Heron, affectionately known as Apostle Heron. So you are the gift itself and you belong to the church, not, local, not just local assembly church, but the universal uh, church as well, body of Christ, um, could be a calling or an assignment uh, that God wants you to fulfill outside the, the, the walls of the church, and that's okay and good. Questions or comments about anything that we've talked about tonight, uh, any, about where we're going, what to expect, and how we're moving forward? Done? Good? Everybody clear? Okay. Good then. So uh, for next week, um, we're going to talk about the, the qualities and character of, of a teacher. Uh, I want you to think of your teachers that you've had in your life. Um, you can, uh, your favorite teachers, the teachers you did like, your the teachers you didn't like and didn't care for and hope you never see again in life. Those, you know, think of all those teachers. Uh, I want you to list three three qualities that you liked of the three favorite. You may have a bunch, but, but uh, pare it down to three. Um, three qualities that you liked uh, about the teachers that you did like, and then three qualities about them that you didn't like. Um, well, yeah, whether it's from teachers you liked or teachers you didn't like, doesn't matter, but just the qualities. We're going to talk about the qualities. The ones, three qualities you liked, three qualities you didn't like. Um, that's the mm -hmm. assignment for next week. We're going to discuss that as we talk about qualities and characteristics of a teacher. Now, this is any teacher? It's any not teacher. Just... Okay. Any teacher. In and school, out of school. Um, and realize of, and also that there may be other people in your life who have been teachers that maybe didn't fall under that title. Uh, sometimes our family is our teachers for us. Um, you know, strangers can be teachers, <laughs> you know, if you're, if you're tuned into that. So 
uh, just think of, you know, who you who you've learned things from, you know, you uh, and who probably uh, filled uh, filled in that space as a teacher even without the title, um, and just list those qualities that you like and didn't like. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Anybody have anything? Like I said, I'm trying to keep it about an hour. So if we get out early, hey, that's just extra time. <laughs> Nothing like getting extra little time back. <laughs> I don't think anybody would be a problem with that. So uh, once again, thank you for um, attending and this exciting journey that we're going on. Um, and no, I thought someone said something. Um, if nothing further, we'll go ahead and dismiss class, and, um, and let's see you sooner. We'll see you uh, next Tuesday, uh, same time, same same place. Man, right. have a good week, everyone. Love you guys. Love, Love you too. Guys, God bless you. We'll see you next week. All right. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.